this has been a, a space that uh, there has been multiple, multiple failures uh, previously. And uh, it's, it's such an important patient population because we all have patients that are symptomatic or admitted to the hospital and uh, have significant, uh, not only morbidity, but mortality. And we're still waiting um, a winner, perhaps not the winner. Uh, we were, I think we're a little bit more sophisticated yeah. than that. But uh, from the, uh, the trials of uh, left atrial recompression devices that uh, in Barry's talk, um, one, of the, one of the really exciting things I find about uh, this is it's treating the underlying pathophysiology of the G itself. And what I mean by that is the pathognomonic sign of preserved EF heart failure is an increase in pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, left ventricular filling pressure, during exercise, during some kind of activity. Because these patients often have no symptoms at rest, or very many, very minimal symptoms at rest, but it's with activity. Well, this rather interesting, uh, uh, formerly experiment in nature, in patients who happen to have a, a, a atrial septal defect uh, when in a setting with raised left atrial pressure, the observation has been that these patients actually do better if they can decompress that rise in left atrial pressure. Uh, so now we're in an era where we're purposely, at least currently experimentally, trying ways to decompress that left atrial pressure, increase in pressure with exercise to the right side of the heart, to the uh, right atrium. Now, there may be some problems with that, and Dr. Borlaug was quick to point out that we have to be careful about patients with existing uh, right heart or pulmonary, uh, or pulmonary vascular disease. But, uh, uh, boy, we'd all love to see a therapy that could help to decrease this exercise-related rise in uh, filling pressure. So the patients in HEFPEF, um, we've actually uh, uh, undergone a little bit of a change in thinking about them. We used to, uh, it used to be the older, thin lady uh, who came in uh, to, to offices in the hospital complaining of shortness of breath without uh, any activity. They, they can have pulmonary edema. Uh, but really the, uh, the, the phenotype has been changing over the past 20 to 30 years and there are uh, into more of a younger, more obese uh, patient population with many comorbidities. Uh, typically, they have uh, they, they have have some varying degrees of common pulmonary hypertension, often in the setting of uh, sleep apnea. Uh, one of the consequences of obesity, uh, as well as other problems with obesity, that we think contributes to the hef uh, phenotype. Um, uh, a large number of patients with diabetes, pre-existing hypertension, um, and it is half the uh, the patient the heart failure patient population out there. We used to also think that the outcomes, uh, morbidity and mortality, uh, were less uh, in patients with HEFPEF than that of, uh, of those with uh, reduced ejection fraction heart failure. However, that's un undergone a metamorphosis. These patients are admitted to the hospital frequently. They're very symptomatic. Uh, and their, uh, their mortality is, may not be quite as high as patients with HEFREF, but it's a very close second. So it's in both a morbid and a mortal condition that as of yet, we have uh, no way of present, preventing those hard outcomes of, uh, of mortality.